Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. In the previous episode we took care of a better food production as well as power production and we also finally introduced some exosuits. So now my dupes can safely walk around outside of the base. I feel pretty secure with my power transformer setup at the moment even though this line here is potentially gonna overload, we'll have to observe this. Another problem we're dealing with is the overpressure right here. We cannot really get rid of the carbon dioxide if the pressure is above 1800 grams. Before we get rid of all these gases though, maybe we can make this our advantage by actually digging apart everything else that might potentially off gas. For instance also the chlorine and if we are already overpressured then it's not gonna have a chance to emit and we have plenty of time to bring everything to its proper storage. I believe my next course of action is gonna be to dig away some of the terrain here. Maybe let's exchange this with a tile and I also want to make my way down here, dig slightly over, get rid of this shebang. We're gonna continue with our ladders here, dig away some terrain there and then I believe we're ready to expose the bleach stone and the rest of the slime. If we check the slime lung around here, it is now slowly going down, hovering around three and a half thousand, but it's gonna continue to go down as soon as we get rid of this polluted oxygen as well. I just noticed we had an idle dupe and that can only mean our storage bin is full. Slowly but surely we need to think about a more infinite and permanent setup so I don't always have to empty this bin for my duplicates to continue working. One more thing I would like to plan out is how we deal with this cool salt slush geyser. For instance, I would like to see a layer of igneous rock all the way around, so we are gonna exchange these tiles as well. And then my funnel for the liquid would go over to the right side. So let's say eventually we're gonna expand this and it's gonna go all the way down. And let's just see where we actually end up. We end up right on top of the steam vent. I'm not sure if I'm too fond of that just yet. Yeah, I think I kind of want to line up with this edge. So we're going to move that up here, get rid of this guy. Whoop. And then I'm just going to leave a couple of tiles free so my duplicates can still walk past. That means we want to continue until here and then finish the funnel. Also going to set up a ladder for duplicate maintenance in here. And then maybe, just maybe, we leave some spaces open so they can access everything much easier. Now they have something to do and we already get an idea of what we might want to do in the future. But this is where my liquid is going to drop down. And wait a second, it is still not really what I want. I need to have this on the other side. Yeah, like the funnel needs to go on this side. That makes more sense to me. Okay, now I would say they can actually go ahead and start to build this. This is quite a big building task because we need 400 kilograms of igneous rock for each of these tiles. But that's just how it goes. At the moment we are doing well with food. Yeah, gristle berries, 15,000 kilocalories. That is a good sign. That means my farm is slowly but surely going. I'm gonna copy the settings of my seed chest and I actually want to deconstruct this because it is kind of an eyesore. Also, we don't really need the dirt anymore since we only require fresh water with this place. Right there. Now we need to think about a quick solution for our polluted water. At the moment it is completely full, it is also quite hot. But the bigger problem is that if we continue like this, the bathroom loop is gonna clog up. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. A hatchling egg. I'm now not collecting the eggs anymore. I just know that my hatchlings are gonna be here. We are also gonna kill off this guy. We don't need them anymore. This is gonna hatch. And we can continue the cycle of keeping these guys alive. I'm gonna plant a third thimble reed, not because we really need it, just because I want to use up more polluted water. And in the meantime, my duplicates are building more stuff. Now, I lost track of what I actually wanted to do. Yeah, this is more of a side project. What we actually wanted to do is excavate more stuff here. Maybe for now, I'm just gonna set this corridor to priority 4, so they do everything else first in terms of building. For instance, I would like to break through everything right there, right now. That is the dream, that is the spirit, it is the way. Alright, we're making some progress with the excavation here and as a result we are able to expel a little bit of carbon dioxide. So over the course of the next few cycles we should hopefully see some more oxygen down here in the basement as well. 
Now, we might want to think about the lower part here as well. Let's make this episode about planning the infrastructure for this contraption. If we set this up in the next couple of episodes, we will be able to switch to electrolyzers right away. We can get rid of the oxygen diffusers, set up a much better system, since we will have a reliable source of water. However, before I do a Rodriguez or anything crazy, I would like to get a better concept of the overall base, because my first electrolyzer setup should be in a permanent location, that's not something I like to move. Now considering we have another cool slush geyser over here, we should be able to combine all of these systems. I will have to probably pump this over, even though we could just let it flow, but it's just gonna take away too much of the real estate. Even this here might be a bummer. I mean it would be nice to just use gravity, but we could keep things much smaller if we used some piping instead. Yeah, you know, I would have liked to use gravity, but this is a bad idea thinking about it. Blocking off a huge area like this is just not worth it. I'm sorry, I have to get rid of it. So instead we're gonna tap into this geyser and we're gonna do the same thing over here. Bring everything down in order to cool the steam vent. And if we manage to do all of that, we're probably set for the rest of the game, at least for this base. What we can prepare in this case is the insulated piping with igneous rock and we want to route a couple of pipes through here. One is going to be for the polluted water and another one for the brine. And we're just going to bring this all the way down straight to where we need it. Before we pipe through this mess we want to make sure we have some tiles here otherwise everything is just going to break through and the brine is going to spoil our day. I then want to make sure my guy spilled all of this and we also want enough space for a pump in here including a sensor. So we're gonna need an additional space and then right here this is where we close everything off. However for now I still would like to access it so let's leave an opening and we're also gonna build a little insulated staircase there. Our food reserves at the moment are increasing because we are excavating more and there is still muck root all over the place. If I were to guess, you could probably survive 100 cycles just by grabbing those. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Finally, germs are going down. A thousand per tile left. That means soon enough we can probably already expand the base. In the end, I would like to have everything open. So my dupes only need the exosuits to access certain areas. That would be considered too dangerous otherwise. We can now also start to disassemble certain deodorizers that are not nearby polluted oxygen anymore. As a matter of fact, all of these are obsolete. Right here, I'm gonna keep on building the ladder shaft as we would have it. Fortunately enough, space-wise, everything is adding up. Right here, we want to see a liquid pump and we also want to see a sensor. And that is the hydro sensor. We want to detect a certain amount of liquid in here before we actually activate the pump. So connect this with some automation wire. We also want to think about power in the long run. I would like to completely close this off and actually this should be done with igneous rock all the way around. That means we might want to check research power. We're gonna need certain cables, namely the conductive wires. They're gonna be expensive in terms of refined metals, but it's gonna be worth it. They finished building everything. We do have a little bit of polluted water here. That is a pity. However, it is also good we have everything filled up with liquid because that means we will not be getting any nasty gases in there as well. My suggestion is we're gonna run both pipes through here. One is gonna be connected to the pump. The other one will eventually continue over here to the other geyser. We also finished the research so we can hook up some conductive wires. Fortunately enough, we just have enough copper to at least finish the room. So we need at least two cables to do that and then maybe we have some spare. No, that is fine. We can create some more. We have plenty of copper still, 44 tons and we still haven't dug up everything. So I'm gonna go with 20 crafts or so. And lo and behold, we now have oxygen in this area. That means my rock crusher will be more pleasant to work with for the duplicants. Everyone is helping out at the moment. I'm really proud of them. They just didn't build the most important pipe so we could finish this. However, we now have more refined copper so we can at least finish this. Okay, Alto is actually taking over the job right now. He's very determined. I'm gonna let him, not gonna be mad. My operator is taking a break anyways. Lazy bastard. However, he just earned a skill point which I believe we can use. We could go into improved strength. Or we could also do some in improved construction. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna be building a lot, not spend a lot of skill points. I think I'm gonna do that. 
I mean, we can always skill scrub them if that was the wrong decision, but there we go. Congratulations, Harold, to the new perk. Good, first geyser room is finished, we can seal this off and hopefully never have to enter again. Also, the hydro sensor, I wanna set this to a certain thing. Let's, uh, for now, just leave it be so the pump doesn't do anything. Well, at the moment, it's not hooked up to power. But we're gonna change that in just a second. I believe we should have enough space here for one of the more advanced power transformers. The large one goes right there. Actually, if we continue this, we could even have it closer. I believe I would like to do that. So let's get rid of those ladders and then... Well, I have to see. I don't think I can actually use it completely submerged. We're gonna put the large power transformer over there. And then I guess as soon as we build those insulated tiles, we want to drain the water somehow to worry about later. Thank you, Camille. We're now gonna open this up. Everything should go well. And then the submerged power transformer is not gonna be a problem. Oh, there we go. I just missed the breakthrough, but we're now draining the water. There's another duplicate, but probably nothing for us. I mean, I would be interested in some omelets, but I do not accept care packages. I'm gonna make my way down here and we need to open up some more of this terrain, get more space. We cannot quite get rid of enough liquid to make this worthwhile. My goal is to continue this cable and actually break through here, so all of this needs to go. It is gonna interrupt the power spine a little bit, but maybe we're just gonna end the power spine here because as mentioned my main power spines are gonna be on the right and left side of the map. Maybe one little improvement we can do here is exchange these with mesh tiles. This way the polluted water can rise just a tad more. Wonderful. Looks like there is just a tiny amount of liquid left. That means we can get rid of this barrier. We don't need that anymore. Ah, this is actually such a relief. I'm just gonna open all of this up at the moment. Well, we are losing all of the chill here. But I'm not too worried since I've seen we have a massive cold balm here. We're still gonna try to make use of the chill, but I'm gonna have my temperature barrier just a tad higher. Okay, heavy watt wire connect to you, and then conductive wire goes over. We should also have a bridge, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. I was worried there for a second. And connect you. And of course, we can still connect more to this line. At this point, I'm gonna set the hydro sensor to send a green signal if it detects more than 500 kilograms of liquid. And, oh jeez, I just made a little mistake here, though... Uh, no, it doesn't matter. I made this barrier here, so nothing can happen to my water. However, I still kind of want to be quick in preventing anything worse from happening. Let's see if we can do this. As long as we don't accumulate too much stuff here... Actually, it is accumulating. Ah, what you gonna do? We'll fix that in no time. Whew, okay, took me a while. We cleaned everything up. We just have to get rid of the polluted water bottles now. Then we also want to go ahead, finish this shebang here. We should possibly use a joint plate. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with a heavy watt conductive joint plate. Ah, though we could just go with the lower tier. Yeah, since this is temporary, we don't need to make it future proof. Let's deconstruct the heavy watt wire there. And we're gonna set up a heavy watt joint plate instead. It's not really necessary, we could just leave it open with the cable, but I think it kind of looks niftier. And finally, everything hooked up, the pipe obviously is blocked, because we have nothing down there. But this is the first contraption already hooked up. I'm now going to disable the large power transformer, we don't need it hooked up, it's not necessary for it to produce any heat. And then once we start using the contraption and actually hook it up to the cool steam vent, then we can enable it. You know, at the moment, I'm actually kind of tempted to just let the water all drop down, because then we can even out the temperatures here a little bit, make this cooler. We would have to sort out more liquids, but that's fine. At the moment, we have way too much of everything anyway, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut off this line, so the new liquid is not gonna enter our base. We can then do something simple, like setting up a liquid vent right there. This is gonna expel all the liquid down to the bottom, cooling it at the same time. And we just take the liquid from inside here. I wanna make sure we get rid of all the polluted water at least. That might be a problem because it is stuck to the top. I honestly did not consider that. But yeah, in this case we're gonna enable the building and also we can just drain this pool here. So it would go down... Yeah, maybe we make sure it actually goes down at the correct spot. Well, it would go down at the correct spot. Yeah, let's just open it up. Why not? Open it up there. 
And there we go. This time I didn't miss it. Yeah, I think that was a good decision. All the cool water is going to go down. It's going to dribble down here and then finally join my large pool here at the bottom. Great stuff. This should also immediately change the temperatures here and we will be getting a much more agreeable temperature in our pool. Okay, I actually kind of like that. And now the brine is also flowing down, also joining the same pool. Yeah, I'm actually kind of happy with the results of this. This was kind of a major hurdle because my ladder system is so close to this. But in the end, it added up. The contraption itself is going to be rather small. You might have guessed it, but because of the polluted water, we now have polluted oxygen in here. And that is really not a gas I would like to see permanently in here. We have to go inside the contraption once again anyways. And the reason for that is I would like to see a background texture for this. And I believe I installed a mod that is going to allow me to build something similar to a drywall, but with just a decorative purpose. Yes, indeed. Glad we've already researched that. Now, depending on which materials we build this with, it's going to have a different color. Let's maybe go with something quite resistant for our contraptions. Generally, igneous rock, I think, is going to do a good job. It's going to be reddish, just like the insulated tiles we have here. Actually, this is going to be gray, not red. Okay, maybe it's not going to be the same colors. I mean, these are two different mods. This is material colors and this is wallpapers. So we'll have to figure out which materials are going to result in which colors. One thing I need to tell you about this mod, it is a little bit cheaty in terms of decor. If you don't want to play with something that gives you additional decor, then don't use that mod. I think the bonuses are insignificant and you get way too much decor anyways. But I'm curious for your opinion and feedback about this situation. I'm gonna try to set up a deodorizer right here, so at least we can get rid of the polluted oxygen. If we have some oxygen in this room, actually I do not mind. That is one of the many gases I would prefer over polluted oxygen. Again, okay, we're getting to the end. I can already go ahead and mop this up. Wonderful. The rest we're gonna convert to normal oxygen and then we can close this up. Just one thing I need to make sure, I need a space to actually dump my brine. There it is, the bottle emptier, you take care of the brine. I'm gonna replace this tile with an airflow tile because now we also have carbon dioxide from duplicants in there. You know, it doesn't really matter, but for OCD's sake, I would like to have only one gas in there. And will you look at the lower part here? Zero surface germs, all the slime lung has gone. That means we could now theoretically take care of the second biome. In the next episode, we have to do something about all the liquids we have hanging around in the base at the moment. There's lots of polluted water that we could convert to normal water. However, we need to make sure we also clean them out. Of course, we don't want the clean water here to be germy. Even though theoretically the only thing at the moment it would affect is the water cooler which we have disabled. So it wouldn't even matter that much to get germy water if you don't cook with the micro mosher, for instance. The electric grill, as to my knowledge, is killing all the germs. But you know, it's just better to have a clean tank. And we also have all of this chlorine hanging around. We even have some here that we could utilize in order to clean out the germs. But definitely most important is that we take care of the polluted water. This is going to bite us in the butt otherwise. Okay, looks like we did it. I'm already gonna close these guys off and then we probably can... Yeah, let's just deconstruct this too. Uh, no, 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 wait. Materials are gonna land on the right side. Yeah, this is always a pity. So I actually have to first deconstruct it, then pick up the materials. Devin, stop breathing. Oh my gosh, did you just... No, no, get, get out of there. What the heck were they thinking? You gotta be freaking kidding me. <laughs> Uh, you know what? We are gonna do this correctly. I'm gonna make a freaking liquid lock here and then we're gonna pump this freaking room out. Bottle emptier goes right here. We want to disable brine for now. Can we mop some up again? Sure enough, we can. And then we are gonna do that right here. Brine goes here. We also want to set up a pump. And I guess for now, we just have to put the gas pump where the liquid pump is at the moment. Just having to pump out a room makes it so much more complicated than it needs to be. What I also like about the wallpaper mod is that it actually completely hides the pipes. That's also another thing you guys might not like. This is why I'm just showcasing it right now and you can kind of vote in today's comment section if that is something you like or not. There we go. Liquid lock is already in place, so we're not gonna need that bottle emptier anymore. This little piece of brine is actually enough. 
I'm gonna suck out all the air beautifully illustrated by this game. Because this is a small room, this should also go very quickly. However, with big rooms, it's kind of tedious. We have some idle dupes. I think what I want to do for now is just sneak around. And I kind of want to know what this volcano is about. There's a trick with digging this up with the highest priority in order to know what it already is. But I kind of like to figure out by going there. We also go down a little bit further and then dig over here in order to theoretically continue the ladder shaft. So more ladders here and then more fire poles there. Making sure we don't destroy the tiles that hold the liquid. Made the same mistake again. These ladders should be built out of granite. It will go much quicker. We're down to a couple of micrograms. Soon enough this is going to be a vacuum. Then we want to rebuild the liquid pump and close off the room. Come on, boots, 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 boots. Five micrograms. Are you serious? Ah, <sighs> finally. There it goes. Deconstruct the pump again. Rebuild the liquid pump. Wait, Camille, you don't need to go anywhere else but here. Okay, maybe you need to. Screw you, do what you want. There, liquid pump is in place. I was already in shock when it started to pump, but it is actually this little bit that saves us. So let's finish this off and we will be done with this room. Also the pump, we should set that back to 500 kilograms. We want to pump only when we have a significant amount of brine in there. Wonderful, we have a vacuum in here. Now I just have to clean up the mess I made. <gasps> you guys, I need to end this video. I'm not focused anymore. Now we have to go back in, get rid of the pipes. But yeah, you get the basic gist. I'm just gonna clean this up over the next cycle. And with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap up today's episode. I sure hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.